All right, welcome back AP Calculus. We're gonna be finishing this lesson on section 2.4. In this lesson, we're looking at, again, continuity of a function. In this example, we have g of x, and g of x is two pieces of a function. So we have x squared minus one over x minus one, and we also have uh, the two, the g of x equals two, as long as x equals two, one. So let's take some notes down. in order for a function to be continuous at a point it must satisfy in order for a function to be continuous at a point it must satisfy the function must satisfy three conditions and we kind of talked about this previously in the previous lesson the first condition is the function at that value must exist And in this example, we're going to be checking, um, does a function ex exist at x equals 1? Number 2, the limit as x approaches that, that c value must also exist. And the last condition is the limit as x approaches c of that function must equal to f of c. So in this particular example, if we use our conditions to check if this function is continuous, we'll start off with the first, the first uh, condition. Is the function defined at 1? And the answer to that is yes. At 1, the function is 2. Check. Number 2. Is the, fun is the limit, does the limit exist? So the limit as x approaches 1, does that exist? Let me point out that our function is not f. Our function is g. So this, I'm going to erase this little f right here, this should be g. Because we have a g function according to, let me get my highlighter, my marker tool. Our function is the g function. Alright, so the limit as x approaches 1 of our g function. The question is, what does it equal? What is that limit? So we have to figure that out. We're in, we're in condition 2. Oh, I think I was using my highlighter tool. So g of x. We have to figure out what the limit is. So here we go. We're on step 2. We're going to figure out the limit. The limit as x approaches 1 from the left of g of x is at the same as the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of g of x? Question mark. We gotta check if the left side limit is the same as the right side limit. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the left. And in this case, uh, we want our function to not equal 1. So we're gonna be using x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. Likewise, for the right side, we want our function to not equal 1, which is the x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. So then, we continue. We can factor out. We can factor out uh, the numerator. And you get x minus 1, x plus 1. The denominator is x minus 1. 
on the right side we have the same thing x minus 1 x plus 1 all over x minus 1 all over x minus 1 and at this point we could cancel out the x minus 1 we're going to remove that problem and we end up with our limit as x approaches 1 from the left of x plus 1 and on the right side you have x approaches 1 from the right of x plus 1 we could do plug and chug plug in 1 into the problem and you get 2 and that is the same thing as 2 so the limit does exist so for part 2 the limit does exist check and now we're at part 3 does the limit as x approaches 1 of our function g and yep our notation was g we're good of our function g is that the same as g of 1 and the answer is yes because the limit was 2 and g of 1 is also 2 so we satisfied all three conditions so this example of g function it is continuous because all three conditions were satisfied so basically if you were to graph this this would be this would be a, a problem because when x is 1 you get a removable discontinuity when x equals 1 at x equals 1 you get a removable discontinuity and you kind of see that here when we're slashing out the x minus 1's however you're filling that in you're filling that in um, when we have this 2 guy right here you're filling in the problem with a y value of 2 when x equals 1 so you're kind of taking care of the, the problem right there alright so let's continue in our next example we're gonna find the value C such that f is continuous everywhere so we got our piecewise function x less than or equal to 2 and you have another uh, part of that function it says cx plus 6 if x is greater than 2 so that's the letter C x plus 6 as long as x is greater than 2 so we're gonna check our conditions for continuity and then we're gonna use a graph later on so first condition is is our function defined at 2 is our function defined at 2 so we're gonna look at the part that has an equal sign which is this guy and we just plug in 2 for x 2 plus 3 5 check easy function is defined our second check is does the limit exist as x approaches 2 in this case we have a f function not like last time it was the g function so does the limit exist when you're checking for limits you gotta check the left side and the right side so here we go limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x is at the same question mark as the limit as x approaches 2 from the right side of f of x All right, so as we're checking limits from the left side of the function, left of two, we're gonna be using the x plus three. So the limit as x approaches two from the left, less than two, less than two, that's x plus three. That's that guy right there, that's that function. And the limit as x approaches two from the right, that's the cx plus 6 function all right so now we do um plug and chug plug in 2 for x and you get 2 plus 3 remember once you plug and chug you don't write limit anymore you just write the value plug in 2 for x and you get 2c plus 6 so you have 5 equals 2c plus 6 
Now we're solving for C. So if we subtract 6 on both sides, you get negative 1 equals 2C. Divide by 2, you get C equals negative 1 half. So that is our C value. Going back to our question, it says find the value of C so that the function is continuous everywhere. So we were using our condition to check for continuity, right? There's three conditions to check for continuity. In that process of checking continuity, we were able to determine the C value. So now we know that C equals negative half. So now if we go back to the original function, and I'm gonna get my highlighter for you. This is where I'm gonna plug in the C value. Because now I figured it out, C is negative half. So I'm gonna rewrite that. Over here. So my new function, it's not a new function, I'm just rewriting the C in there. We still have x plus three, as long as x is less than or equal to two. But instead of c, we figured out that it was negative one half. x plus six, as long as x is greater than two. So that's our; those are our two piecewise. Well, those, that's our piecewise function. There's two functions in there. And now, if we graph this, what we're saying is: here's one, here's two. Anything greater than two and anything less than two is on this side. So what we're saying is when x equals to two or less than two, we have one side of the function. So when x is two, you get five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm using this function right here. When x is one, you get four. When x is zero, we get three. <laughs> my, my grids are, are like way off, but I could just fix it. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe it should be bigger like this. Make the dot bigger and you can make your straight line. So this is that linear function, how that linear function should look like. And that's a x plus three line as long as x is less than two or equal to two. And then the negative slope, negative half x plus six. Well, this is just a sketch, but that graph should look like this. It's a negative slope it goes in that direction. So that's how that graph should look like. There's two parts of that graph, when x is less than two and when x is greater than two. And when x is less than or equal to two and when x is greater than two. All right, in this next example, we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna to try to solve for c. So in solving for c, we're gonna use our conditions for continuity, right? Condition number one. Does a function exist at that x value in question? The x value in question are these guys right here. Is a function continuous at 2? So for the first condition is, let's fix this. The first condition is f of 2. Does it exist? So when you know that when x equals 2, that's this guy right here. Oh, sorry about that. When x equals two, that's this this piece wise that I'm gonna use right there. So when x equals to two, I'm gonna use the two cx. So going back to my marker. So when x is two, I get four c. So the function is defined, and it's crazy because it's a it's a letter c but that's what it is. Next, does the limit exist? The limit as x approaches two of our f function, does it exist? All right, so we gotta check the left side and the right side. So the limit as x approaches two from the left, the left is x less than two, which is x squared minus one is that equal to question mark the right side which is 2cx so then we plug and chug 
2 squared is 4, 4 minus 1 is 3. Plug in 2 for x, you get 4c. Divide by 4 on both sides. So that's our c value. Next, That's it. Find the value of c so that the function is continuous everywhere. We figured out the value of c. c is 3 fourths. If we were to graph it, I'm going to rewrite this and I'll do it in blue this time. If I were to rewrite this, because now, now that I know what my c is, x squared minus 1 and 2 times c. Well, c is 3 fourths. So if I were to say two, if I were to say two times three fourths, right? C is three fourths, and then there's an x. This cancels; that becomes one half. So it's actually three halves x. Three halves x. So this guy right here is three halves x, and this top part, as long as x is less than two. And the bottom part is as long as x is greater than or equal to 2. So we have those two pieces of the function. If we were to graph this, we go to 2. When x is less than 2, it's a parabola that opens up. And there's a minus 1 in there. Negative 1. And it's a parabola that opens up. So I want to say that a parabola looks like this. All right, there's our parabola. But when x is equal to 2, you have this equation. Sorry, I'm just I, when I write with my hand, it moves everything. But I gotta use my, my utensil, my little pen here. So when the function is 3 halves x, it's a linear function as long as x is greater than 2. So that means I'm going to the right of 2. 3, 4, 5. Anything to the right of 2, it's a linear function that's positive 3 halves x. So at 2, the graph goes up. And I'm gonna write a little note here for you guys. This part right here is 3 halves x. That equation, let's call that y1 just because. And the other equation, this guy, this parabola, I'm going to call that y2. That's x squared minus 1. I mean, but those equations are part of the f of x function. They're piecewise function, so that's why there's two parts to it. And that function is continuous. It's a parabola combined with a straight line, with a linear equation. So it's a continuous function. You don't see any holes. You don't see any breaks, any jumps in the graph. And that's what we did right there. All right, we're down to our last example, you guys, for this lesson. Find the value of a and b so that the function is continuous everywhere. All right. So go ahead and take a moment to write this down. Alright, so for this example, we're trying to figure out how to make the function continuous everywhere. And we're also solving for letters. We're solving for A and B. So one thing that I want to kind of just review with you guys one more time, when you're checking for continuity, you got to check where the function is defined. Where does that happen? Where does the function might not be defined? And that's these guys right here. These are called like the endpoints of the graphs. Not endpoints, sorry, the connections, the connections of the graph. Those two equations are connected at negative one, and these two equations are connected at three. So we gotta check our connections. So check. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> check. 
connections. All right, so we check our connection at x. Let's just say at negative one. And then what that means is I'm gonna take the top part of the of the equation, the negative two x plus one, and I'm gonna make it. Okay, strike that. <laughs> when we check our connection, we gotta check our um. We gotta check uh, the conditions for continuity. So remember the first condition is a function defined. I was already just jumping to solve it. The function is defined is f of x defined. So we gotta check is our function defined at negative one at that connection. So you look for the equal sign and that is that is this guy right here. This highlighting should disappear. Uh, so there's the equal sign and we're also going to be using this part okay so here we go we're going to say f of negative 1 equals ax plus b Step number two, the limit. Does the limit exist? As x approaches negative one of our f function. For the limit, we gotta check the left side and right side. The limit as x approaches negative one from the left is that the same as the limit approaches negative one from the right? All right, so from the left side of negative one, that's the negative two x plus one. So this is negative two x plus one. From the right side, that is ax plus b. We're going to do plug and chug. Oh, and we're still limits, right? We haven't plugged it in. So you got to write limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left. Let's fix this guy right here. Limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right. All right, so now we can just do plug and chug. So negative 2, plug in negative 1 x is negative 1 so negative a plus b this becomes positive 2 plus 1 which is 3 alright so that's the connection for negative 1 that is what we're left with an a and a b can't do nothing else so now we're gonna check our other connection check connection Three. So for that connection, we're going to use the middle, the middle uh, equation, the middle function, the middle part, which is ax plus b. But before we do that, I always jump. I always go ahead of myself. We want to check for continuity. So the first step is our function defined at three. What's f of three? Look for that equal sign. Do you guys find that equal sign? which is this guy right here, this guy right here, there's an equal x equals 3. So that's the, that's the function we're going to use. This is the function we're going to use, 6x minus x squared. So we're going to write 6, instead of x we're going to plug in 3 because that's what we're plugging in. 6 to 18 minus 9. So our function is defined. The function is 9. Number 2, check our limits. The limit as x 
it reaches 3, because we're checking our connection at 3. We're going to say, does that exist? So we got to check, does the limit exist? Just like in part 2, we were checking if that limit exists. So in order to check for the limit existing, we got to check the left side and the right side. The limit as x approaches 3 from the left, is that equal to the limit, question mark, as x approaches 3 from the right. So from the left side, we have ax plus b. From the right side, we have 6x minus x squared. Remember, we haven't plugged in chug yet, so you gotta keep writing that limit until you plug in the three. Now, if you do plug in chug, you get 3a plus b, and you get six times three, which is 18, 18 minus nine, like we did earlier, and we got nine. So there's our a and b, but we haven't really solved anything yet. We just ended up with the a and the b part. If we're solving for a and b, we have two equations, right? We have three equals negative a plus b, and you have nine equals three a plus b. Any ideas how you can solve for a and b? So to solve for a and b, you might be thinking algebra two, solving a system. And I think what I'm going to do is multiply this by negative 1 so I could cancel the b. 3 equals negative a plus b. Negative 9 equals negative 3a minus b. The b's cancel if I'm combining. And I get negative 6 equals negative 4a. In other words, a is equal to 3 halves. Now I gotta solve for b. So I take that three halves and I just plug it into any of the equations. So three is equal to negative a plus b. I'm gonna plug it into that equation. Negative three halves plus b. I add three halves on both sides. So I get three and three halves but I could change that mixed fraction into, um, I think it's called improper fraction, I forget. Um, so multiply these two guys, three times two is six, plus three is nine. Keep the denominator the same, nine halves. So that is our result. We solved for a and b, that was the question. Find the value of a and b so the function is continuous everywhere. To check for continuity, remember the three conditions, is the function defined? That was the first check. Is the function defined? Right? That's number one. Number two, does the limit exist? You got to check the left side and the right side. When we're checking for these limits, you end up with some crazy looking letters in your equation, but you got to solve for those letters. And in this case, it was a solving systems problem. All right. Thank you guys for checking in. Take care.